everybody and welcome back to a what's going to be a definitely unplanned but somewhat interesting video basically um obviously yesterday as of the time this is filmed it, which is the 26th of december was christmas and i got the mother load of apple stuff uh basically what i asked for was an apple IIc however not only did i get an apple IIc which also happens to be the alps variation with the really nice alps mechanical keyboard switches but I also got this matching monochrome uh, Apple monitor, um, a rather interesting clone laser uh, five and a quarter inch disk drive, um, this uh, weird uh, but cool little dust cover thing. Well, actually, it's not really that weird. It's just a dust cover for the monitor, but it's still really interesting as most people have lost these or gotten rid of them uh, by this point. Uh, but also, uh, a lot of cables and stuff. Whoops, uh, let me find somewhere to put this. I'll sit back here on the floor. Uh, uh, for one, I mean, you have like display cables, the power supply, and tons of other different uh, cables and stuff. Uh, and there are even more cables than this, actually, but I don't have them all on the camera right now. And then something that's all also going to be really handy because this can not only be used with the Apple IIc but also with Macintosh computers, which is what I'd probably mainly be using it with, and that is a fully functional. Um, the ribbon still hasn't entirely dried up yet. It was a little bit dry when I first got it, but I decided to twist it a bit forward, which actually the, it looks like the foam roller hasn't degraded yet. And the roller in here apparently still has some ink left because it was still able to do a test print. So that's pretty cool. So pretty much everything here is operational, um, except um, it is all pretty nasty. Um, I mean, just taking a look at the 2C alone here, um, there's like tons of food in the keyboard. It's really yellow, which I probably won't be able to fix in today's video because it's obviously the middle of winter. And there's just all kinds of gunk and dirt and stuff in the key switches and like in the vents and everything here. The image writer 2 printer and pretty much everything here is also really yellow, but this um, uh, does need some cleaning. Uh, it is pretty dirty in some areas. Um, uh, the, the laser floppy drive, however, is the only thing that's not really functional. It spins up, but it does not read from any disks or anything, so I have a feeling it just needs some new lube on the drive rails. So we will take a look at that, but this also needs some cleaning, although not as much as everything else does. And the power supply, again yellow. And the monitor also does need some cleaning as well. So with that said, we're going to be doing a lot of cleaning in today's video, so let's get straight into this. So here's the Apple IIc itself. As you can see, this thing is incredibly yellowed. Uh, Taking a look at the keyboard itself, um, it does happen to be the Alps variant of the Apple IIc, um, which definitely has a much better feel to it than the other ones. Um, and also it has a ton of crap in it, making it almost disgusting to use. Moving over to the back, there are a lot of uh, scuffs, uh, most likely from the, this part of the machine rubbing up against the desk. However, as I mentioned earlier, it does power on and everything does seem to work. I'll go ahead and put in this Frogger disc in here to demonstrate the floppy drive, and as you can see, um, if we uh, go ahead and reset the machine, it does uh, boot up into Frogger, which is perfect. However, unfortunately, for some reason, I can't figure out the controls of this right now, so, hmm. Anyway, though, as far as the printer goes, this also does work, um, and of course, since it's a dot matrix printer, it was really loud. You, I can sure tell that people weren't complaining about mechanical keyboards back in those days, instead they were probably complaining about dot matrix printers, but it does actually work, and as you can see, it looks really nice. Anyway though, it's time to actually get into the restoration of this 2C. Uh, the first thing I'm going to go ahead and do is remove all these screws here on the bottom, and uh, this is uh, fairly simple, but it can take a while. Um, anyway though, with that said, the next thing I'm going to do is flip the machine back over to its top, and uh, that is because there are a few clips uh, on here. There's one on the front, as you can see here, and there are also two more on the sides next to this disk drive. However, fortunately, these are fairly easy to pop out, and uh, they don't cause too much uh, inconvenience. And with that said, the back cover, or the top cover, just comes right off. And uh, here it is. As you can see, it is pretty yellowed, but one thing that's interesting is it also has like this fabric-y material here in the vents. I've never actually seen this before. Usually, they don't do this on other computers, which is kind of strange. Anyway, though, uh, the next thing to come out of the machine is this keyboard. Uh, it's fairly simple to remove. All you really have to do is lift up on it and then uh, pull it outwards as it clips into the disk drive, as you can see there. And then there is a cable down here that you will have to remove in order to plug it in, but with, when that's all done, it comes straight out of the machine just like so. 
Next thing I'm going to do is unscrew these two screws uh, holding the power supply in and then lift that out as well. Um, this sort of slides out, uh, slides back and then lifts up and as you can see here it is. Interestingly enough this one is smaller and doesn't have the RF shielding that you usually see on these things. And it appears to be made by Aztec as well so maybe the ones I'm thinking of are from a different manufacturer. Anyway though, I'll, I'll also go ahead and uh, remove the uh, disk drive, which is the final thing we need to remove before being able to take out the motherboard. Fortunately though, it's easy to remove, it just unplugs from this little cable here, which uh, plugs into the main logic board, and then all, it just slides back right out of the machine. And uh, here's what it looks like. As you can see, a lot of stuff going on in there, and the bolts actually held up, which is kind of interesting. Usually they become brittle and uh, fall apart by this time. Um, anyway, though, with that said, I'll proceed to remove all the million screws that hold the motherboard in as well, because Apple likes screws here. Um, but yeah, anyway, with those all removed, um, the board should just lift right out, although I had a little bit of difficulty with mine as it had this, uh, volume knob here, which was causing a bit of issues. But eventually, um, I was able to slide it out of the machine, finally. And here's what the motherboard looks like. Speaking of the motherboard, I figured that since we already have it out of the computer, I'd go ahead and show you what some of these chips do. Starting, of course, with the MOS 65CO2 processor. And this was the later version of the MOS 6502 processor, and uh, this was used in uh, a few other machines, such as the Apple IIe, and also uh, the Laser 128 line of Apple II compatible systems. Anyway, though, uh, moving on to the next thing, we have the ROM chips over here. These are used to store various things uh, such as Applesoft Basic and a few other things that the system needs. Over here we have 128k of RAM and uh, up here we have the character ROM which stores all the text characters. Right here we have the integrated WAS machine which is the same uh, disk controller that was used in other Apple II machines as well as some of the early Macintosh computers as well. And finally over here we have the system's I.O. chips. Anyway, moving back to the restoration, as you can see here, there appears to be the speaker which I wanted to remove in order to more thoroughly clean the case, however, unfortunately it's held on with epoxy, so I'm just going to leave that alone for now. Um, that's not really essential to remove, but anyway, um, there is a lot of cleaning that needs to be done, especially on the bottom piece where uh, it was rubbed up against the desk where, wherever it was sitting. Um, as you can see, especially right here on the slip here, um, that's where most of the scuffing is. Anyway though, fortunately that cleaned up with a bit of isopropyl and denatured alcohol, and uh, as you can see it's still yellow but it looks pretty fresh. I'll also go ahead and peel off the remains of this uh, rubber foot that fell off at some point, and uh, I'll go ahead and uh, replace it with one of these that I typically use on my old Macs and stuff. However, the only issue with this is that um, the foot is too short uh, due to the way the machine sits, it has to be a certain height. So I ended up um, adding a bit of a foam pad underneath it to uh, bump up its height a bit. And I also went ahead and replaced the foot on the other side as well, um, just to um, make sure that they're both even. Anyway, with that said, I also went ahead and did a little bit of cleaning on the top case piece, although this was nearly as dirty as the bottom one, and so there wasn't really as much that needed to be really done to it. I just generally wiped down everything just to clean it off and make it look a little bit fresher. And as you can see, here is the finished uh, case piece here. As you can see, it looks pretty fresh, although it is still yellow, that's for sure. I'll also go ahead and uh, remove these uh, screws holding on the cover on the built-in 5 and a quarter inch floppy drive as I want to uh, clean the uh, reed heads and do a few other maintenance tasks on this drive. Now, uh, one thing to keep in mind is that you will have to clean the reed heads on these Apple II drives manually, no matter what type of Apple II drive it is, as these are all single-sided drives, therefore using a f uh, cleaning disc on these would likely damage the felt pad that presses against the other side of the disc. So it's smart just to do these all manually. I also went ahead and removed the four screws holding on this little front plastic piece onto this drive as it was kind of scuffed up and I wanted to clean it off. This thing's also a pain to remove and install by the way. Eh, I got it back on eventually, no big deal. Um, and with that said, I'll also go ahead and reinstall the other metal protective piece because I am now done working on this floppy drive. And now it's time to work on the keyboard. Now let me just tell you, this thing is absolutely disgusting. I mean, there's literally like spaghetti plaster to like half the keys, or at least I hope that's what it is. Anyway, the first thing I'm going to do here is go ahead and take a high resolution picture of the keyboard and uh, go ahead and begin to remove uh, pretty much every single keycap from this thing. Now, this definitely does take a long time, and it took me a good 15 or so minutes with the limited tools I had, but eventually I got all of the keycaps off the board. 
And yeah, these are nice switches too. Anyway, there are some special metal stabilizer pieces attached to some of the keys, like the space key, for example. Um, and you'll need to store these separately, as since we plan to wash these key switches or key caps, I don't really want those metal pieces in there as well. Anyway, I seem to lose some footage, but I put these uh, keycaps in some uh, water for a bit and some soap in this bowl here, and I let them sit in order to um, get rid of all that gross stuff. And I'll also go ahead and plug in this fan and turn it on in order to blow the water out of the keycaps. And while waiting for those keycaps to dry, I went ahead and uh, took a Q-tip with some ice purple alcohol and cleaned out in between the uh, keyboard itself, since there was a lot of dirt and stuff in there. And anyway, with that said, the keys are now all dry. However, before we go ahead and reassemble the keyboard, I'd like to go ahead and take a look at the spacebar, which as you can tell is a lot more yellow than the rest of the keys. Now, since I can't really do a major or a big scale retro running project like the entire case and everything till this spring or summer, I decided I could at least try to retro the space key indoors in order to at least make the system look somewhat better. So I set up this little table here, which I was gonna use uh, to set the actual key itself on. I'll also go ahead and set the key in this little Tupperware bin, and I'll go ahead and uh, pour in some of this 3% hydrogen peroxide, which isn't the strongest hydrogen peroxide you can find, but it, it does still work, although granted it takes a lot more time. Anyway, I think that's good. Uh, I'll go ahead and reposition the key to remove all the air bubbles, and uh, with that uh, all taken care of, um, it's time to move on to actually hanging the light here. Um, in order to retrobrite stuff, you do need a UV light, um, and this is, uh, I'll get more into that whole situation later, but anyway, um, I was able to get this light, um, this old fluorescent tube light hung, uh, with just a, a few strings, which probably isn't the safest approach, but, eh, whatever, I was only gonna use it temporarily, and here you can see it, uh, finished. I went ahead and ran over an extension cord from, uh, my workbench, uh, over to, um, the power cable that we need to plug into the light, and, uh, we'll go ahead and plug that in and uh, turn it on, and as you can see, it does in fact work. However, the only issue with this, and why I ended up moving it, is because um, while it is technically bleaching the space key, which is in the hydrogen peroxide, everything else, all the other computers, it's actually yellowing, and of course that's not good, so I ended up moving it from this corner where all my uh, collectibles are over to uh, this table over here. Anyway though, with that said, as you can see, here's the key, retro writing. I did periodically check on it every now and then to make sure it didn't float up to the surface or was getting treated properly um and uh eventually after the first uh night of letting it treat i took it out and uh wouldn't compared it to um the other keys of course drawing off the hydrogen peroxide first and rinsing that all off and as you can see it's definitely still uh, a pretty um, visible contrast here so i ended up putting it back in but um anyway uh here you can see the final result um now i did get lazy and didn't film the rest of the process but as you can see here it's still a little bit yellow because i just got lazy with it um but uh as you can see there is a lot less of a contrast now between uh this other key and the um space bar so i'd say it was uh, a pretty big success there anyway with that said i'll go ahead and start reinstalling the keys i always start with the bigger keys like the space bar since they typically have stabilizers that are more difficult to install but Eventually, I'll move on to installing all the smaller keys. And finally, I'll go ahead and place on the last key. Now, it's pretty stereotypical of me that I always end up putting uh, one key in particular on backwards, it seems like. Um, sometimes even more, but yeah, I'll go ahead and fix all those, and uh, yeah, there's the finished keyboard. And with that said, it's time to go ahead and reassemble the computer. Start by going ahead and clicking back in this power supply, and then we'll go ahead and set the floppy drive right on top of that. And uh, make sure that clicks into place. And then I'll go ahead and pop back in the keyboard, and then clip the uh, top case piece on after installing all the proper cables and everything. And then I'll proceed to go ahead and screw uh, the case back together, and um, with that said, here's the finished product. As you can see, it's definitely a lot fresher looking and cleaner, even though it is still pretty yellow for darn sure. Now, um, as far as the case itself goes, I do not plan on retrobriding this until the uh, spring and the warmer weather, because I just don't really feel like attempting such a large-scale restoration project, or retrobriding project, um, such as the case panels in this machine, um, well, I can't really go outside to do it because, I mean, first of all, it's not really the safest thing to have those kinds of chemicals, um, and that, that quantity of them just sitting, you know, in a room that you are in pretty often, and, um, I also don't really feel like it's very convenient versus just, you know, sitting outside, 
um, with some high strength hydrogen peroxide for a day or so, you know, out, outside. But um, anyway, with that said, um, overall, the machine is definitely in a lot better state cosmetically than it started out as. Um, it's a lot cleaner. And um, I don't have to wash my hands after typing on the keyboard anymore. So overall, I'm fairly happy with the machine itself. All right, so uh, the Apple IIc is finished. And uh, I'm sorry, I was going to also include the restoration of like the monitor and the cleaning up of all that stuff as well. But uh, this video is running a little bit uh, over time. Uh, this is really just supposed to be a filler video, just something I can get out quickly on the channel. And it's sort of become more of an actual video that I'm working way too much on as far as time goes. And I also have a lot of other things going on right now that I need to dedicate time to. So uh, I decided that what I'm going to do is I'm just going to cut this video off here. Um, so we have the Apple II restoration done. And then we, we can get into more of the retro writing stuff and the accessories and everything next spring. Or this spring when things start to warm up a bit and I can start doing, you know, retro writing and stuff like that again. Anyway, though, um, there's something else I'd like to talk about real quick um, that's going to be pretty fun. And uh, hopefully you guys will find that interesting but basically um uh this march um if any of you guys uh watch some of the bigger you know retro tech youtubers you know ape guy lgr uh people like that um you might know about the whole septandy and the whole dosimber sort of situation um and basically something similar is going on to that in the retro mac community this march and it's going to be called marchantosh and it's going to be the whole hashtag thing uh, but I've decided that I'm going to be participating in it, and uh, it's going to be pretty cool. There's a lot of other bigger uh, retro computer or retro Mac related YouTubers. For example, uh, Action Retro is going to be participating. Um, Steve from Mac84 is going to be. Uh, computer Clan, a uh, kid from the Computer Clan, is going to be doing a video for it as well, and uh, several other people. So uh, I actually earlier today sort of got to talk with some of them about the whole situation and sort of. Uh, you know, talk about what we're going to do. So that's going to be pretty fun. I'm looking forward to that. Um, also, they have a website. Uh, go check uh, down in the description um, of this video for it. And uh, yeah, um, go check out some of the other channels. Uh, there's a whole ton of other ones I didn't just mention there that are also participating. All good channels. I watch all of those uh, people. Um, but yeah, um, with that said, um, I'm looking forward to that. You should be seeing content relating to that this March. And uh, with that said, I'll see you guys all um, in the next video.